working for the railway and for the India. Right. That's that's quite a, a sense of community, isn't it? Yeah. Backbone yeah. of the country. Right. The nationalised Indian rail network employs one and a half million people. It's the country's biggest employer and the fifth largest in the world. Here the Prasad family are laying on a special Hindu ceremony to commemorate a railway veteran. It's remembering the father of the family who died nearly a year ago and they think that he was a hundred. He's remembered both as a family man and as one of the people that kept the railways going. The British ruled India for so long because the majority of Indians gave them active support. Railway staff and their families, then and now, proved to be a first line of defence against those who might be keen to bring down governments. I'm leaving Jamalpur to head to a small town called Ara. Seventy miles further west in Bihar state, Ara is deep in the heart of poor, rural India. There I want to discover how the iron fist of the railways came up against the belligerence of Bihar. At Ara, the newspapers tell us about more violence from yesterday, which makes me think of yesteryear. For the second day running, terrorists have caught the headlines. Maoists blow up rail tracks, torch vehicles. Unrest in Bihar. That would have sounded awfully familiar to the British forces stationed here 150 years ago at the time of the Indian mutiny. By 1857, the railway builders had achieved what seemed an unstoppable momentum. In just three years, they had laid nearly a thousand miles of track across the subcontinent. The engineers had brought Dalhousie's main line to Ara, just at the moment resentment against Britain boiled over into rebellion. And it happened a few hundred meters from the railway. Historians in India don't describe this as the Indian Mutiny. To them, it's the rebellion, or more heroically, the first war of independence. In July 1857, a violent mob surrounded this house, which belonged to a British railway engineer, Richard Boyle. He was one of the great pioneers of the Indian railways. At this time, there were just a few hundred British engineers scattered across the subcontinent. And like many of them, he'd come to India to make his name in the greatest civil engineering project of its time. Fifteen Brits and fifty well-armed Sikhs withstood attacks from nationalist forces outside of several thousand. You can see from this picture from the Illustrated London News what it was like during the siege all round here, how the sandbags were put up to help the defence. And here is the plaque which was put up by the Viceroy Lord Curzon. Richard Boyle writes a vivid account of what happened. Boyle was amused to begin with when the attackers opened up with two cannons. This is what he wrote. There was some degree of amusement when it was ascertained that the contents of the cannon which came rattling through the defences consisted chiefly of heavy brass casters torn by the mutineers from pianos, easy chairs and couches. But soon it was the defenders who were rattled. 
and Boyle's tone changes markedly. He says, hope and trust and reliance on providence and on each other cheered and supported the little band of heroes. Boyle's story, The Siege of the Little House at Arra, was perfectly judged propaganda to prepare the way for a savage British response to the mutiny. After eight days, the siege ended with something of an anticlimax. The rebels withdrew, perhaps encouraged by the fact that 400 British soldiers were on their way to retake the town. Boyle, the railway engineer, lived to tell the tale and went on to help build the Japanese railways. For the first time, the railways and what they represented had become a battleground. This is the portrait of the rebel leader, Kunwa Singh, and he is, of course, a local hero, a nationalist. He led the forces that surrounded this place, and he, of course, is commemorated, and not our man, Richard Boyle. Professor Anil Sri teaches history and politics here at the university. Why were the railways the target of the nationalist Because forces? that was the only means of transportation. When the railway track is damaged, the area will be easily captured by them. Will be captured by yes, them. Yes. So the, that was, that was the, so the nationalist forces, yes, 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 the yes. railway was the first target. Yes, that was the first target. The interesting point here is that the railways had arrived at Ara. It was, in fact, the main line yes. from Calcutta yes. that had come here. So we see the dissatisfaction with the railways very early on. 1857, there comes the mutiny. What do you attack? The railways. They wanted to cripple the British economy. Cripple the British economy. Yes, yes. Yeah. They, they thought, thought that, that railway is an instrument of exploitation in the hands yeah. of the Britishers. They thought that raw materials are carried from here to Britain. Yes. Iron was there, sulfur Iron? was there. Really? So many natural yeah. resources were there. Yeah. And railway was used as an instrument to enrich British economy. The siege at Boyle's house in Arrow came at the beginning of India's long struggle for freedom. And even today, the spirit of revolution lives on. The rebel leader, Kunwa Singh, who was 80 at the time, is revered by today's students. They see him as one of the first great nationalists, a freedom fighter, fully endorsed by history. Tell me what you were saying on the on the podium. We were chanting Veer Kumar Singh Amar Rai. It means we don't accept that Veer Kumar Singh have died. Why is he such a great man? He was a nationalist. He fought yes. for the nation. He wanted to get rid of the foreign rule. And he raised his voice against the British regime. So he is great. But when we look at this and we see the house, yes. um, and we see the plaque, which obviously celebrates the heroism of the British who were in there. No, no, no. That is wrong history. He represented the sentiment of India. And he was the hero? Yes, yes, of course. He is the only hero. He was the only hero? Yes, yes. So the men in the, in the house? They, were, uh, they had taken shelter over there. Mm -hmm. They were not fighting for any cause. But they were brave they, though, they, weren't no, they? No, no, they were there to save their life. Right, whereas he, then, was, he was there... Yeah, yeah, he was there. To he save the support, country. Yes, his supporters were there, his followers were there, irrespective of caste, creed, color and religion. Every people who had lust for liberty, every people who had charm for the nation, they were behind him. But what aspects of the British rule do you think were good? What Administration. Were the good Administration, yeah. Discipline. Yeah. Punctuality. Of course, Britain is the mother of democracy. We teach our students. Yeah. But so far as freedom is concerned, freedom is more important than any administration. Than any 